Hello everyone and welcome to the video. Today we're looking at something very, very important in academic writing and that is references. So for your papers, for your dissertations, you need to do obviously lots and lots of research from many different sources. And today we're going to look at how you can include this research in your work. So whether it's a long quote, whether you're paraphrasing another academic, or whether you just want to know how to write the references at the end of your work, we're going to go through everything step by step and hopefully make things as easy as possible. So the first thing we're going to do here, this is just an example essay, but this is possibly the most common way that you'll be using your, your research. And this is by having these long quotes. So it's very important before we even talk about how to do the references, it's important to know how to use this research. So this is all about hearing your voice and your opinions. So you should introduce a topic and then you can use this research to support your opinion or your claim. So you start off with your opinion and then you have the quote from your research. And then the next step is to look at how this supports your, your own claim. So it's kind of a three step process here. So for these long quotes, all you need to put in is the name of the person that wrote the quote and also the year. You might also want to include the page number or the line numbers if it's from uh, a long script or if you've transcribed something, but the name and the year is the most important thing you need to put down here. And if there are multiple writers or authors or researchers, sometimes there's many, many people just from one quote you can use what's uh, what's called et all and that will be able to replace the long list of names for this particular quote. Another style of referencing that is really, really common is what's called in-text quotations or in-text citations. So if you've read a book or an article and you agree or disagree with the opinion there, you might want to briefly explain what that person's opinion or thoughts were. So if you were talking about something that I wrote, so as Miller said, and then you'd go on to explain what they, they wrote about or what they researched. So in this case, you must include the person's name and also the year again that you are referring to. So throughout the text, you've got the names and the years of the people that you've been referencing and uh, referring to for your own work. And at the end of the text, there should be a completely separate section, which is for the references. And this is where we have to put out the full references for all of the research that you've used. So it can be a bit complicated, but we're going to go through this step by step First up, we're going to look at the person or the person's name, depending on how many people have worked on this. So you would start off by putting the surname or the family name first, and this should be followed by the initials in their names. So I go by Adam L. Miller when I'm doing my research. So if you were to quote my work, it would be Miller and then the initials A.L. If you've got multiple sources here, you can't use et all now. You must write down all of the names of the writers and the researchers. And sometimes this might not be in alphabetical order. You should put it in the order that is found in their own work. So sometimes they might even supply you with a reference. Don't change the order of the writers. Follow the system that they put in place. Next up in brackets, we write the year when this paper or article was first published. If it is a newspaper article online, it might even have the day and the month, which would be really great. 
but the year is the most important thing. Next up, we put down the title of the research. And this will most commonly be the name of the article, the name of the paper, um, perhaps you're even quoting from a video. Whatever the title is will go next. And following the title is where this was published. So that might be the name of a newspaper, the name of a magazine, or the name of a journal. So if it is a journal, it might get a little bit more complicated. You might have to put down the journal number or the volume number. Maybe there's something called an ISSN. All of that information should be ready available from the journal itself. And please try to include it in your reference. Lastly, we have to put down the page number. So if you're quoting a specific quote from that research, put down the page number from which that is from. So if you've taken uh, a few lines from an essay and that essay was on the, let's say the 56th page of the journal, put down page 56. If you're paraphrasing or explaining the entire article or the entire paper, put down PP, so double P, and then the pages that it runs from. So if it's a 10 page article, you might put down page 57 to page 67. But yeah, the page number is very, very important. Obviously, if this was an online newspaper or an online magazine, there might not be page numbers. But if this was published in a journal, including the page numbers is very, very important. Okay, so just a quick recap. If you have the longer quotes, it should look something like this in your essay. You can see that there, it is clearly indented. There are the speech marks surrounding it and we know who wrote this and when. If you're doing an in-text citation and you're summarizing some work, again, we know who wrote it and when, and you've given a brief outline as to what that research is about. And last up at the end of your work, you should have these long list of references. It tells you who wrote the paper, when, the name of the paper, where it was published, and then further details, if necessary, of the volume or the journal number, as well as the page numbers as well. One more thing to remember, please make sure your references at the end of your work are in alphabetical order. And that goes from the first letter of the last name of the people that you have used for your research. But I know this is very, very confusing. So as always, any questions, please leave them below and I'll be happy to get back to you as soon as I can. But thank you very much for watching and hopefully I'll see you very, very soon.